Here is a quick DIY on how to replace fuel injectors on a N54 powered BMW. It's a pretty easy process that anyone can really do if you have the right tools. Uh, you are going to need a device to program the new fuel injectors, so a Windows computer will work. However, I'm going to be showcasing the method to do it where you need an Android and Pro Tools. Uh, that is an $80 license, so watch out for that. I also recommend you do this while the car is cold as you can round out the injector holes if the car is warm if you're not careful. You're going to have your fuel lines off while doing injectors. If your door is open while the battery is still plugged in, uh, it's going to squirt fuel out everywhere as it primes the ignition. So there's just some warnings. This video is a little bit chopped up. This is taking place over two days. I was in a rush to get the injectors in when I was doing it, so I got what footage I could, but I'm trying to collaborate everything together in a logical order and try not to miss anything out. So to begin the installation of the new injectors, you're going to have to take off a few things. You're going to start with taking off the engine cowl up at the top, then you're going to have these two covers on the side, then you have to take off your engine cover and you'll be ready to start doing some work. So to take off the engine cowl, you're going to have these four bolts on top. They're going to be 8 millimeter bolts. I have stripped mine out, so I've replaced them with some Torx bits. So next you're going to want to take off these covers. There's one on this side and one on the other. These covers on the driver's side is covering the master cylinder and on the passenger side is covering the DME. So to take these off you're going to have two clips on each side. One here, one there. And you're going to have this little rubber piece you need to pull out as well. On the passenger side, you're going to have a temperature sensor that needs to come out as well. You just rotate that up and it'll just come out. Next to remove the cowl, you're going to have two 8mm bolts. One here and one on the other side. Come to the center part of the cowl. Both of those pieces will just slide out just like that. Make sure you pop out both of these. There's one on the other side as well. You'll probably find it helpful to take out this uh, strut brace over on the passenger side while doing this. So you're gonna have a E14 bolt right here and a E18 in the center. Make sure you're using e torques on those. Now that you've gotten your cowl off, you're good to take off your engine cover. So you're gonna have three five millimeter Allen bolts that are on top. There are gonna be two in the front and one in the back. I currently don't have the one in the back. I don't run it as I take off my engine cover frequently as well. Now that your engine cover is off, you're good to start taking out the coil pack so that you have room to get the injectors out. So the way I like to take these out is I will pop up the tab then I will squeeze and rotate it up, which I'll show you right here. So I pop the tab up, just like that, and then I squeeze, pull it up. And that wire will just come out just like that. Now you're good to take out the coil back. So these are kind of difficult to get out. Uh, I usually just use my finger and pull up. The sleeve may come out with them, but you can just throw that back in. So this is the coil pack sleeve. Uh, it's just like a little thin sheet of metal that just goes in and holds the coil pack. So uh, when you're putting this back in, you just want to have this little slit in it facing towards the front of the car. All right, so the first step to getting the injectors out once you get your coil packs out, you're just going to come over to this little sensor and unclip this little box. It'll come right out. Uh, this you could either use a pick on the back or you can just push on it and pull upwards. This one's a little broken anyway, so it came out pretty simply. 
Uh, next, you're going to be taking a 14 millimeter wrench to each of these fuel lines. So it's going to turn. Might want to have a rag. Once you break them, you can just undo them by a finger. Like that. So this bracket down here uh, is an E10. You're going to undo this and just take it out with a uh, magnet. It comes out pretty easily. I was able to make a custom fuel injector puller for around $10 using parts I found at Home Depot. So essentially there's three parts here. The things you're going to need are first a hex nut. It's going to be an M12 by 1.5 millimeter nut. This is able to screw onto the fuel injector. It uses the same thread pitch. Second, you're going to need a course to act as a slide hammer. And third, you're going to need to find like a longer bolt. This one has a thread pitch that's imperial, so it doesn't fit onto the metric bolt. This helps because I'm able to screw this on and then it stops rotating. So that gives plenty of room for this to screw on the fuel injector. So essentially, this replaces the $80 tool. The only thing is you can only use this if you're purchasing new injectors because you need to put on new seals if you're reusing old injectors or buying some used you're not gonna be able to do that without buying the $80 tool. But this one works fine if you're just buying new injectors and throwing them in the cart. You're able to just screw it on and use this as a slide hammer. All right, so next I'm gonna be coming in with my homemade injector puller. So I'm gonna screw this on to the tip. Just like that, and then pops out just like that. All right, so we have our new fuel injectors. We're gonna take it out of the box. So you want to take note of these two values, these two three-digit numbers right here. Uh, these are going to be your values you're going to have to input on Pro Tools or whatever software you're using. Next, you have your decoupler. The FCP kit is going to come with six of these. Uh, what you do is you just throw it on here, and it clips into place. It should be able to just spin it just like that. So now you have this part of the tip. Uh, when you take this off, you only have between five and ten minutes to actually put the fuel injector into the engine. So you should be somewhat quick about it, but it takes like 10 seconds to put it in, so it's not too difficult. So for the tip, you just want to rotate it off with your fingers. Don't use a tool like FCP Euro recommends. Now with the tab facing forward, just going to go down, stick it in. Just like that, just want to press down on it until it stops moving. Now you're good to put your little plate back in. So when reinstalling these brackets, you want to put both the fuel lines back on and tighten those down. You really just want to go like decently hand tight. Uh, unless you have a crow's foot wrench, you're not going to be able to torque those down properly. Uh, so then you're going to come down once those fuel lines are on and that E10, you're going to tighten that down. So after throwing the car back together, you're good to go to Pro Tools and start to reprogram the fuel injectors. So for coating the fuel injectors, I would say the easiest option is to use Pro Tools. It is $80 where Impa is free. However, with Impa, you need a Windows computer and it's much more complicated. So in order to code the injectors over Pro Tools, first you're gonna go to drivetrain, then engine, then functions, then injector coding. So what you need to do is take note of those six numbers on the injectors. So we have 580156. So let's say I were to put this one in cylinder one. I'm going to come down, tap injector 1, and put in that six digit number, then press confirm. The last three digits may change as their adaptation values. Oh, that is fine. So you want to come through and make sure you do that for all the injectors. All the injectors are going to have different numbers, so you want to make sure that for injector 1, you're coding that number onto injector 1, and then so on and so forth. And once you're done, you're just going to turn that ignition on. The car is going to crank for a little bit since there's no gas in the fuel lines, but it'll start up after a second. Uh, to prep the system, you can just throw the car into ignition mode a few times uh, and it'll reduce the crank time, but it should be fine.